off the left. Who am I playing off the left? Yeah. You like this one? Go on. You like it? Well, on to today's show. Now, you might remember we recorded our last England special all the way back in November, just before England's win over Malta. The big that, one. And that stunning draw. <laughs> the bigger uh, one. With North Macedonia. Yeah. Uh, of course, in that edition, we both picked our best 11 to start England's first game at the Euros. Uh, we're going to briefly remind ourselves of what those 11s were, and then, rather than go through them position by position, rather than go through them position by position all over again, we're going to address the talking points that have emerged since November and during this international break. And in the second half, we'll then answer a selection of your questions. Thank you very much for them. We had lots and lots of questions, yeah. uh, but we've picked out the ones um, that were written by my family and friends. <laughs> no, there were quite a lot. I <laughs> no, mean, like, was, yeah. sometimes you get seduced into thinking that people lose interest in football in international break happens. Nonsense. Not these guys. Certainly not. Not you guys out there. No. Uh, right, Luke. Uh, remind us of your uh, 11. Peter Shilton. <laughs> Paul Parker. <laughs> not all-time 11. Mark Wright. Come on. Terry Butcher. Come on. Okay. Um, so, in Jim November, <laughs> in November, I went for Jordan Pickford in goal. Yeah. Carl Walker, John Stones, Harry Maguire, Luke Shaw as the back four. Uh, Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham. And then Bakayo Saka, Harry Kane, and Marcus Rashford. Mm. And you, I mean, you were similar to me, weren't you? Yeah, I was the same, but Phil Foden on the left instead of Rashford. And I think I've won that argument. You have. And I think you do get very sensitive about people hammering your England selection on Twitter. <laughs> uh, when we did those little graphics, when sometimes people would pick my team over yours, you'd get mm. annoyed. You'd like text me about it and stuff. Uh, it, that definitely happened. <laughs> I camped outside your house with some of my supporters. But anyway. But what it is, is in, look, we sit here now in March. So December, January, February, March, four months later, and things change. Things do change. And we think of this England team as being quite a settled team, but in a way that can bring exciting young players through mm. uh, when it needs to, through things like injury and, and age and perhaps um, even the old suspension as well. It does really show you, those of you listening out there who listened back in November, how much things can change across four months of a Premier League season. Oh, yeah. Because things have changed now. And I think it's fair to say that if we were going to do it now, it wouldn't be quite the same. I don't think it would be that far off. It wouldn't be quite the same. Wouldn't be quite, which, which is what I said. That's what you said. So, so the key, are we saying the key areas are now defensive midfield, um, perhaps centre back, and then left side of basically left wing, basically. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think I think we do defensive midfield first. Let's then. do that then. Mm. Uh, so you said that it had to be Phillips alongside Rice back in November for the familiarity, and obviously Phillips wasn't playing that much then. Uh, we expected him to play a little more and then he goes on loan and we think, oh, that's good. And quite frankly, he's had a disaster at West Ham. Yeah, so far. Yeah, so far. Yeah. So, so, so Calvin Phillips, he's played his way out of the team and the whole squad, quite frankly. The question... Southgate's like, I prefer it when you weren't getting a game. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, none of us knew, so we just had... Yeah, to, yeah. yeah. Um, Calvin Phillips has played well for England and has got big tournament experience. That is something that he has. He didn't, uh, he, he wasn't a starter as the World Cup would progress for England. Jordan Henderson became that, that player. It was Henderson, Rice and Bellingham in the midfield three. Mm. Um, it, you know, Southgate is loyal to players, but there does become a point where even Southgate says, look, I, I, I can't. Well, he's not going to pick him. He's in the most recent squad. He was at the thing stand, yeah. unless he has an absolute barnstorming last yeah. part of the season. In which could happen, and he could force his way back in, mm -hmm. because really Southgate's effectively saying to a player like Phillips, for the reasons you've just suggested, yeah, yeah. give me a reason to pick you and I'll pick you. Yeah, and so it'll take something special for him to turn that around. Mm. At the current state of play, that seems unlikely. Yeah, I would So agree. I think we have to kind of let go of Calvin Phillips for the moment. Yeah, um, like now, in Titanic, where he slides off the uh, board and, and Kate Winslet lets Leonardo DiCaprio go. Yeah, I mean, Is I that think what we're doing. I think I think he was sort of going through natural causes. Really, I think yeah. you can't blame Kate Winslet's character for that. Were you shagging him in the car earlier, or I Philip, you and Phillips? Officially, no. Okay. Um, okay. Southgate was for a bit. Ah, uh, come on. Okay. Give Gareth, you know, it's an analogy. Once you start it, you got to run with it. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. But the tabloids are you know, very literal, aren't they? They don't they do are. analogies. Oh, the tabloids will be great this summer. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so, um, we said at the time. Uh, when talking about the England team, if there was any replacement, we thought it would be Conor Gallagher, which was not a dreadful shout because he started the game in that position against Brazil. Yeah. So obviously Southgate listened to us again. Um, what do we think of that now, having seen Kobe Mainu in there and uh, and various other suggestions that have um, been made for that position? So 
I've, I've been on a bit of a journey with Gallagher. I kind of felt like, because obviously he started out where he started out and he went on loan to Palace and he looked pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. And you think, okay. So In an advanced role. Yeah, and he, he was playing in a much more positive way and a bit further forward and he looked good and he's mm-hmm. like a great example of what is generally a pretty awful practice in modern football where really big teams have amazing players and they're, they're not good enough to play for them yeah. but they're still good enough to do really well at other Premier League teams, yes. which is terrible, but I don't want to get away from that point. So Gallagher kind of did that and I went through a phase of once he went back feeling like, I don't really know what he does, mm. apart from the fact that he's good in the press. He's got legs for days. He's, he's game. He's energetic. He's actually got a little bit of a habit of popping up. He can produce moments. moments of course, yeah, yeah, moments. And so that's all fine. Mm. But I don't really know if he's well suited to playing. I know I appreciate you started it against Brazil. I don't think he was that good against Brazil. Mm-hmm. I don't think he did that, that good a job. And I, I, I wouldn't... The, the kind of overriding feeling I have when we talk about these kind of things is I ask myself, am I happy if we start a key game in a tournament with him in that position? And my answer is probably no. Mm-hmm. The answer is I'm not that happy about it. England's midfield. I'm and, concerned about it. Yeah, England's midfield looked a lot more fluid in, against Belgium than it is. Are you concerned Brazil. about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't like to be massively concerned, but I, th- I think it wouldn't be the right call. So the options. So the options are then. Yeah. You've got a variety of options, really. And I'll, I'll just go through them very quickly and we can discuss them, I suppose. So you can play Foden in there. What, you, next to Rice? He, he won't, there. but you could do that. Yeah. You could play Bellingham there. Mm-hmm. You could play Stones there. Mm-hmm. And you could play Henderson there. Um, yeah, and... Not all of them. That wouldn't be allowed. Uh, well... Not at the same time. Okay. They probably would win if they did that, though. <sighs> Maybe. I, so you're, you're changing the dynamic of the midfield. Now, the, 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 my concern is that it puts a lot of pressure on Declan Rice if he was to have Bellingham and Foden in there or Bellingham and Madison against big opposition. I didn't say Madison. I don't think Madison suits that at all. No, but uh, well, but he's in that. But it depends what you're talking about in the midfield. So a lot of people don't want to play two behind Bellingham. They want Rice at the bottom and then two advanced. Yeah. Now, Southgate doesn't want that because he wants Bellingham to play like he did certainly early in the season for Real Madrid, um, where he is playing almost right up there with the front man. Mm. to link that play mm. and against uh, Brazil in particular Bellingham again when they were pressing it was like they had a front four almost he's the best player in the world though so, so, so that's probably why so Southgate is saying he's the best player in the world so I want to play to his strengths that Real Madrid have been doing and, and that's what I want to do which I think is very understandable if you play Bellingham like you do when England did at the Qatar World Cup when you kind of play as he was then a sort of a left side of that yeah. in, a, in a sort of number eight position as we yeah. give numbers now um, you then I think someone like Gallagher would be a bit more um, at home doing that as Jordan Henderson did in, in, in that role. I'm not saying we should play Henderson, by the way. But you lose perhaps a little something that Bellingham provides. So Southgate is there saying, no, he's the guy but that it I does want to mean, get everything in. But it does mean you can play Foden centrally. What, if, if you you're playing that. Bellingham as a number 10? It's like, no, you play Bellingham slightly deeper. Oh, yeah. So you, you can put Foden could come off it and play could his be, best It could position. be Foden, could be Madison. Yeah, it's going to be Foden, isn't it? Yeah. It, but, well, I think Foden will start off the left. So you've got, there's a few options there. But you've seen how defensively frail England can be. And I, I'm not sure. And also, Rice doesn't always do that for Arsenal. Rice can do that well. But he's also sometimes got Jorginho there and he can get up as well. I think having that more, slightly more defensively minded player in there is, is, is the answer. I think Kobe Mainu is probably the answer. The one who, if he can come back injury wise, um, I do think it's interesting to, to talk or, or to mention Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now he's due back in, in, a, in a week or two. And if that is the case, then he's got time to do that. I think he's an exciting player. People say defensively. Well, he's not just there defensively. I think he slots in and he's quite but, but dynamic. So I didn't list Alexander Arnold or Mainu because mm. I still think it's too early for Mainu. But I know I noticed in the show, um, <clears throat> kind of talked about it a bit yesterday. But the show I wasn't on earlier in the week, um, you guys have almost like completely vault fast on Mainu. Mm. Went from like it's too early for him to he looked really good and so he should play. Well, I understand. And then you I... also said that you think he probably could start the opening game of the Euros. Well, I didn't want to go too big on it on, on um, Monday's pod because I thought people are going to think I'm crazy after seeing him 15 minutes or whatever it was in the England shirt. When he came on, immediately I thought this guy should start. I honestly right. did. That was, my, that was my sort of feeling of it. And I, I think Southgate will do that personally. I think he'll play him in the midfield. I think the idea of two behind Bellingham, you could play... Kind of almost like sort of Barcelona when when they had yes I've said Barcelona when they had sort of Xavi, Iniesta and Busquets yeah it wasn't like one and two or two and one it was 
They were crea- arguably the greatest midfield trio to ever play the game. They were creative midfield schemers, Luke. Yeah, they were. And I think that what you saw against Belgium, you saw Maynu kind of going up a little bit, getting involved. Foden was coming inside as well. A dynamism to England's play that you yeah. don't often see. Again, Rice has to be disciplined. And, he's, and so was, there's a lot on Rice's shoulders. An injury to Rice, I think, is as, as disastrous potentially as Kane getting injured. Mm. I think he's that important to England. Mm. So you've got to think about these things as well. So if Rice, you know, did need a bit of backup, who would it be? And you kind of wanted Calvin Phillips to be the guy. So you have to think of these things. I think, you know, you'd maybe ask Mainu to be a little bit more disciplined. I don't know. Um, so, so you'd have to, I mean, so basically one of the changes we're making then is that you would like to see Mainu in there essentially slotting in next to Rice where Phillips did play. Yeah. And you wouldn't change anything else uh, uh, in that I would have Foden playing on the left wing. But you had Foden on the left wing in the first when you put... Yeah, and I I would still have him there. That's partly due due to the the decline in in consistency from Marcus Rashford though, right? Uh, No, I think it's because... Well, slightly, but actually it's more to all because of Foden's quality. Here's the thing about Foden. I, I, I think when you have someone like Bellingham who's so good, there's two kind of schools, schools of thought. One is you say... He's the best player in the world, arguably, so you play him in his best position. Or you say, he's so good, mm. he can be brilliant really anywhere. And if it means you unlock a little bit of potential from one or two other really talented players, maybe you ask him in games where England can afford to be a bit more attacking, you ask him to play deeper and bring Foden into the middle. Because mm-hmm. Foden says over and over again, basically every fucking interview he does, mm-hmm. he says, I want to play in the middle. Yeah. I'm best in the middle. If I play, really, when he plays off the left, Foden, he's really looking for an excuse to come into the middle. Mm-hmm. And the reason he pulls people all over the place is because he's got amazing quality. But, you but feel sometimes f- you've got to ask players to do a job, like Mourinho did with Samuel Eto'o, playing him on the right wing and all this sort of but stuff. But he's you know? never hit the touchline once in his whole career, Foden. Yeah, he's not that- a winger. So if, 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 is, is, it not, is it not an argument to be said that says, you can have someone with a little bit more pace and traditional wing So what's wing your midfield player. three then against a big side? I'm not interested. Well, that's not what I've said. I've just said against a, a team that you, England can afford to be a bit more attacking. Okay, fine. But it's really, we're talking about the big games. That's what England, they're one of the favourites for the tournament. They've gone deep in tournaments recently. England should beat Serbia, Denmark and Slovenia. Probably won't end up like that. Could have a disaster. You know, you know what tournaments are like. You, you, you never know. But they should beat those teams so if you go for Foden or whoever in the middle that's really not the concern here the con- or, the, or the, what we're trying to drill down is okay they're in the in the in the knockout rounds if they play um you know Germany buoyed by the home by the home crowd you know France uh, uh Portugal you know these types of sides I, I, think, I think I think my <laughs> as we sit here right now I think I would probably play the midfield three of in the middle of Rice, Bellingham and Foden so you would give the people what they want, and I would just uh, just use another option off the, off the left, and you've got quite a lot of options off the left. Mm. So you could you could it gives you a lot more flexibility, I think. But I'm not I'm I think it is too early for him. Uh, so I, I wouldn't pick to play Manu. I think if he had an extra kind of maybe an extra six months or so, maybe I would. But I'm not I'm not annoyed that Manu plays. Yeah, sure. I'll be, I'll be fine Look, with There's it. a lot of people who will agree with you. He needs to be you. given the opportunity. I mean, you don't know what his ceiling yeah, is yet because yeah. he's tried There's it. a lot of people who will, who will be very pleased with what you've said there. Absolutely. My my concern is that, again, who is the kind of backup player for Rice? And, mm. and Southgate's got to find somebody because you do need somebody who can yeah. go in there and, and, and do a job. What about the defence then? Yeah, so let's talk about the defence. So Maguire has his critics. We know that. He looked a bit shaky against Brazil. Uh, Dunk has come in and has not had a good time of it this window it's very fair to say I was backing Joe Gomez to play in, in the centre Southgate's not going to do that and Gomez it's quite weird that he's not going to do that well it? because he, he doesn't really play that much for Liverpool there I yeah. think Gomez can still be a great centre half I, I really really do but he's played him on the flanks and even uh, the flanks you know, the majority of his work's been left back and, yeah, and, even, right back, and yeah. even when he had the chance to put him in the centre he put Konza in the centre instead yeah. so Konza's one who could maybe play back up but Stones is still England's best centre back many people yeah. would argue with that I think Maguire will play and to be honest with you like do, do you <laughs> Would you kind of think, no, no, it's got to be someone else. I want to see Stones and Konza starting at, at, in, in the Euros, or even Stones and Dunk, although I'd be surprised if you wanted to say... To, no, look, to I don't, say. I've got no beef with Lewis Dunk. Um, he's an amazing career. 32 now, isn't oh, he? Well, yeah. He's played brilliantly in the Premier League. He's, he's always, he gets a lot of the ball under the Zerbi. He seems to be able to affect games at that level. Um, but England, but come on, starting for England. No, no he's not going to start for England. I think part of the reason he's not going to start for England, and it's, it's going to sound like a criticism, but it doesn't mean to be, and you can also apply it to Conser as well, is that these players just haven't been given the chance to feature. 
Like Southgate's been so loyal to Maguire, and maybe that's an admirable quality, and maybe that's part of the the, the squad harmony they want. And you know, he wants to you know he wants to shepherd some players through difficult times, and I, I get all that. But there was a time, perhaps unfairly, you you would maybe say where Maguire was under so much pressure mm-hmm. and he wasn't performing that well, and that would have been the time to say, okay, my 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 priority here as England manager is to get England to win stuff. Therefore that player's playing brilliantly, I want to try him. And he hasn't really done that. Mm. And now what's happened is, we're in a position as you know, England fans, looking at a Konza or a Dunk and saying, well, it's just too late. It's too late anyway. The, the, the understanding Stones and Maguire will have between each other, despite Maguire's shortcomings, and, and Stones occasional shortcomings as well, to be fair, it's just so probably innate by now that it seems a little bit farcical to break it up. Mm. That's the position we're in. And, and Southgate's made that bed. And it may well be that if they flunk it this summer mm-hmm. and Southgate moves on, he may look back at that and say, actually, that's something I could have done differently. But Lewis Dunk has five England caps. I'm pretty sure Harry Maguire had five England caps going into World Cup 2018. I mean, Dunk played in the game against Scotland. Okay, he started that game. Um, he, you know, Harry Maguire would have been about 24 then, though. So he's an, he's an improving player. He's a player who not that long ago moved well, to Man United and was playing at the highest level. Fine. Lewis Dunk's 32, mate. Yes, so you said that he'd not been given a chance. I don't see if you play Lewis Dunk time and time again, his pace is not going to improve. Is he going to seriously improve? No, but improve? that's not what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. I said there was a time mm. when Maguire, however many years ago it was, was mm. under incredible amounts of pressure. It might yeah. have only been about a year ago, mm-hmm. right? At that point, if he had wanted to, mm-hmm. Southgate could have said, He's dropped off too much. The pressure's too high. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got to move past him at some point anyway because he's in his 30s now. Let's try someone else. Yeah, fine. But he, but so, he didn't do that. Fine. So I'm trying to drill down who that may be. I don't think it's Dunk. I think we can park Well, it could have been Consa. Well, Consa's that's... been good for ages. No, the person he wanted was Mark Gay. It could have been Gay. And Gay's exactly. got injured. So yeah. he did give Gay a bit of a chance. But unfortunately, Gay's got an injury, which seems an absolute stinker. You know, I mean, to, to be fair to Southgate, you know, he has had big injuries in, in, in the side. Now, Gay is due that's back. That's just part of modern football. Now. Yeah, of course it is. But, it, you know, he's due back um, early May. Um, Luke Shaw's back mid-May. You that's, know, these, see, that's, but, that's a more in, so to me. That's a more interesting discussion. So the left side of defence, you know, Ben Chill will play twice in the in the recent uh, international break, and people were pretty unconvinced by him. He's missed a lot of games through injury himself. Now Chilwell's ceiling is higher than what he showed in those two games. I think you know, I think previously it was always like, oh, it's Chilwell and Shaw. I think most people probably went for Shaw. At his best, he's, he's he can do it all. The sad thing about Ben Shearwell is, as you say, as you mentioned there, just to put a bit more of a finer point on it, I think he's missed something like 120 games in his career for injury. Yeah, and he's always had injuries, even when he was at Leicester very early on. Missed a lot of games for injury, and the problem is, it's it doesn't it becomes not a question of age; it becomes a question of miles on the clock. It doesn't matter what his age is; he he feels like he's 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 really going from hamstring injury to hamstring injury to hamstring injury off the back of a serious knee injury and the, it takes its toll you know you look at the performance level and the consistency of, of say Carl Walker it's not just that Carl Walker's brilliant mm. and he's really quick he's just always available oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and given he's such an impactful high impact player mm. like in terms of his pace and, and, his, and his explosiveness he's a bit of a, mar- a, mar- a medical marvel really but on the other side the sad thing is England have had two really good options at left back mm-hmm. and both of them have had issues with injuries where they've not been able to play consistently to the point where you know it's not that long ago England were having to play like Trippier out of position there because yeah. they had no one available right so so it, chill well I don't want to damn the guy because it seems harsh but based on what we've seen and as we sit here now he just looks a little bit like a shot player mm. and Chelsea have had a difficult season as well, well. He, he could be a little bit of match fitness um, you know issues there and so on so maybe there is a chance for chill well and I think he would go if this is the current state of play. Shaw's a shame because Shaw will be back if if, if it all being well, um, what, what the prediction is, is kind of mid-May. Manchester United would have two games left of the Premier League. One of them's against Arsenal. You couldn't imagine him being chucked in there. England then have two um, warm-up games for the Euros. It's just, it's getting a little bit... It's tight, but you could see, it, all things being well, you could see him do half an hour against Arsenal. You could see him start the other May United game. I don't know who it's against off the top of my head. Um, that may not season may well be settled by then anyway, and you could see him feature half an hour in each of those two warm ups and perhaps start the second group game. Maybe, and maybe. he might be there. Well, what we want is Ten Hag to do a solid for the guy who may replace him. Yeah, is what we're saying. Yeah. That's yeah. what we want. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think we should talk about Gareth Southgate as, as Man United manager um, on this show. Do you think Kieran Trippier could um, could go as a cover for left back? 
that's what he's done in the past. As Kieran Trippier seems to have got past that really difficult um, period he had for Newcastle, Rage mm-hmm. like he needed a rest. He seems to have kind of got, got past that now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the problem with England is, is, is you know, weirdly enough, they've got this strange combination of being quite a cautious team, which I know annoys people, and we'll come on to that, and also looking quite defensively frail as well. Yeah. It's almost like Gareth Southgate seems like he needs to have the system so solid mm-hmm. because of the frailties he's got elsewhere. Mm. And then you've got a factor into the mix. We talked about Stone stepping into midfield. It looks like it leaves you very, very light at, at the back. That's not that. going to happen. Yeah. yeah. You can't afford to do that, can he? No, well, he would have done it by now. Stones can do that, though. Yeah, but, he, but he's not going to for England um, because he's needed in defence, clearly. So with all that in mind, what edits would you make to your England 11? You've always kind of said that. But if you know Luke Shaw's not fit, um, one or two others aren't, those who we think will be fit, say like Trippi is going to, you know, bounce back. No, I, I, we I, don't I, know the extent of Carl Walker's injury. No, so so you can have a bit of play with some of the injured so players. What I've got here is yeah. I've got Pickford, mm. Walker, yep. Stones, Maguire. Mm-hmm. I would take a gamble on Shaw. Right, I would. Given the given the time as we've been told, okay. I think you can only go with the information you've been given. Okay, um, I'll take a gamble on him. I think he can get some minutes. And also, I think that you know, really, I mean, you're talking about group stage. You're okay. playing against teams who aren't as good as them. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's part of it. Um, Rice, Bellingham, Foden, um, off the left. Who am I playing off the left? Yeah. You like this one? Go on. You'll like it. Tom Kearney. He's played for Scotland. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Great left peg, though. That left peg should be enjoyed by more than one nation. Correct. Gordon. Anthony Gordon. I think you could do Gordon, Saka and Kane. I like that. I think, I think what Southgate might do mm. is I think he might say, Rashford, you've done enough to mm-hmm. have, have my trust. The biggest criticism of you mm. has been that you sometimes look a bit uninterested. Mm-hmm. In common or garden, May United home games or whatever, yeah, you're not going to do that for England. Mm-hmm. You've, you know, you've provided some good moments for England. Mm-hmm. It's not good, despite the season he's had. It's not outrageous for me to say to you, Rashford could score in every group game in the Euros. Yeah, he could do that. Yeah. So I, I would be interested in Rashford off the left. But, but Anthony Gordon then um, provides a little bit more defensive cover on that side. But because of all his doggies and with that midfield, he, you could argue that. This is the thing. So to go very very briefly before I pass to you, what I like about Gordon. One, there's two quite old-fashioned points here. He gets through so much work. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking about Shaw perhaps needing a bit of help, yeah. it's a little bit of experiment. It's a bit of experimental. It's a little bit of a gamble. But Gordon is, you know, he will fucking get, be up and down all day long mm-hmm. and he'll be so excited to play for England. So that's point number one. Point number two is, there is still room for a bit of an unknown quantity in tournament football. Mm. Gordon brings that. And he's had a really good season. Mm. Like he's, it's a shame that his season hasn't coupled with the season before this one with Newcastle's quality. Mm. Both together, I mean, he probably would start for England. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's outrageous to say, Do you know what, we've got so much quality, give him a go. You're not thinking back from injuries, Jack Grealish? No, I think he's miles off it. Okay, fair enough. What about you? I'd have, uh, yeah, similar. I would swap out. Um, uh, I would put in Mainu, and I'd have Foden on the left flank. But if Luke Shaw is not available, which is quite possible, um, I think I would go for Ben Chilwell. Because, you know, player with enormous experience, I think he's got time to kind of improve and get more, more games under his belt, more, more, more minutes, all that kind of stuff. So I, I would go for Ben Chilwell if Shaw's not there. Yeah, okay, fine. That will do. The Greenish is miles off at the moment. And Ivan Tony and Harry Kane up front. Well, we can talk about them. We can talk. <laughs> we can talk about them in a bit. Now it's time to tackle some of your questions. But before we do that, Luke Moore, you ran a poll on Twitter to discover yeah. whether the nation uh, backs Gareth Southgate to get the best out of the team this summer. Yeah, the reason I did that is because you and I just talk, I had a quick chat before when we were planning this episode and talked about how the feeling on Southgate. You said to me that it's gone south in quite a big way now. Despite the, um, the successes, if you want to call them that, that, that Southgate's had as the, as the, as the, as the head coach at, at England, there has always been like a negative undertone to it. Partly, in my opinion, is partly because England fans can be very, very entitled and forget pretty easily the shit that's happened. Mm. Um, but I was kind of, I wasn't sure if it, if it was as as pronounced as you were saying it was like you were saying yeah, loads of people out there just don't really like Southgate don't I think, I think be before yeah it was kind of going into the World Cup it was the Euros it was kind of like mm, there was that thing trending on Twitter two defensive midfielders and all that yeah. and I think it was probably 70-30 in his favour I think at the World Cup we started to see it go to sort of 60-40 50-50 and now the poll you'll, you'll yeah, well, listen let me tell you what it is yeah. now and I'll, I'll let people know the exact question because I worded it quite carefully I said in the Twitter poll 
And bear in mind, these are ramble listeners. Like yeah. this, this is not like yeah. you know the Sun. Mm. The ramble listeners are cleverer than people who get most of their football stuff from the Sun, right? So I, I think our listenership is pretty good in terms of that type of thing. Um, do you have confidence in Gareth Southgate to get the absolute maximum out of this England squad's potential at Euro twenty twenty four? So there's a bit, there's a bit of interpretation there. Yeah. You, you, yeah, but yeah, yeah. what do you think they could do? Maybe you know, I didn't put. Do you think England are going to win? Because it's it's yeah. more difficult than that. Yeah. The results were. 78% of people mm. who polled thought that England, that Gareth couldn't get the maximum out of that mm. squad. Mm. 22% said yes. Yeah. And that's a 24 hour poll with about an hour before it closes. So the results aren't really going to change. There's thousands of people who've answered it. I think that's astonishing that mm. over three in four people don't trust Southgate to get the most out of this team. Yeah. Some of the facts are that South, England under Southgate have won more tournament knockout games. Mm hmm under him and they had in the last like 60 years put together or yeah, something. I think England have won I think it was working out this other day they've won nine knockout games before Southgate and Southgate's won seven. Yeah. So nearly, that, in their history. Yeah, in the, sorry, yeah, in the, yeah in, exactly, yeah. The, there's this idea that the I think I, I think that, that people I'm not saying this about our listeners I'm talking about specifically people who I've been chatting to about this and, and from what I've been hearing elsewhere who the, the vast majority are not ramble listeners and I think that a lot of people, a bit like with some of the criticism Maguire got, I understand why, you know, Maguire's got a rick in him, we know that. But as Southgate himself says, this is just joke levels now. You know, it was mentioned yeah. in the, one of the African countries' parliaments and all this kind yeah. of stuff. It, oh, it, ridiculous. it went way over the top. And I think with Southgate, I understand people might have a bit of criticism there because no one is 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 um, immortal. But I think that it is something that, some types of football fans say to try and sound like they know what they're talking about. Now that is a massive dig, and some people, <laughs> some people, will, I don't mean it to be like that. Some because I've done it before with certain opinions. Hopefully, I don't, I don't still do that. We all have it, and I think that a lot of people, and and some people, will be very annoyed to hear me say that. And again, that's not aimed at anyone. In, in, you know, it, 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 there's a feeling, and I think that people go, ah, oh, what a thing about England. Uh, yeah, it's almost a bit like, well. The reason why I don't think we'll win because we'll bugger it up. Like you know, when with 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 certain fans, oh, well, we always bugger it up. I think it's not a case of no, no, no. I think it's the ire has been turned on the manager. I think there's a lot of revisionism with Southgate of well, we should have won a trophy by now. Mm. And I think that is, it's the the Euros final um, we spoke about on the mailbag. You know, that's I th that uh, hopefully won't come back to haunt Southgate because hopefully England can win this tournament in the summer. But I think that's probably the feeling. Um, so yes, the poll results speak for themselves. Hopefully, Sir Gareth can prove them all wrong. But how? So beyond what you just said, there is there anything else you want to chuck in the mix of how you explain that ill feeling? I think the ill feeling is because we're off the back of two. I think the Phil Foden question is. I think I think people look at some of the talent England have, and this is a good England squad. I don't, I don't think it's a brilliant England squad. I don't think it's as good as say what you know Sven had back in in, in those. Days. I think it was more balanced there and so on. So f previous managers have come along and not got the best out of, of, of England teams before, but since. Probably about 2006, you would probably say it's the best squad we've we've had, and I think people want to see England win every single time and win well. And as we know, that that's just not going to happen. I mean, even the great Spain sides, um, in, when they won the three tournaments, you know, in Euro 2012, which was probably the best one, they won the final four nil for crying mm. out loud. They didn't need a penalty shootout in there, mm. you know, in a pretty stodgy game against Portugal, I think it was. Yeah. So again, the the idea of always winning with flair, but. Um, I think that the idea that, it, that England... I think the criticism of Southgate with the substitutions, I think, is fair. And I think that he is a little bit more conservative, but so is Didier Deschamps. And France have got to, what, is it three finals under him? I say three finals because it sounds better than winning one major tournament. Yeah. Um, but still, and I think that sometimes the managers at international level can only do so much. And the reason why we talk about the good vibes and the good feeling is that is such an important it's part something of it. Something you can control, yeah, you it, can and generate. It, exactly, yeah. and, that, and that sort of really gets everybody going. So the idea that... You know, you have a 38-game Premier League season and you'll be judged on this and the best team wins it and da 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 da, -da. There's, there's more factors than that. So, mm. yes. Shall we get on with the questions? Yeah, so just a bit of a shame going into a tournament that that's how people feel. I hope they still get behind the team because it's important. Yeah. Well, this from CJ says, how can England get better at beating the bigger teams? Fair question. Well, presumably he or she means in the, um, in the tournaments themselves rather than kind of these kind well, of... Well, either, you know. Well, yeah, but I think, I think again... Okay, well, let's drill down to the tournament. Then. Yeah. How do England basically win the games they need to win to go all the way and win the damn thing? Well, 
They kind of, I mean, what, how far away were they from winning the Euros before? Mm. A penalty shootout. Yeah, but the manner of the game, people would look back at that and be disappointed that well, the substitutions it, uh, were a bit, yeah. were a bit, you know, he was a bit ponderous on that. They weren't on the front foot. They kind of went into themselves. They suddenly thought, oh yeah, we're England. We don't really know how to keep the ball. But do you we're think they did gonna... think that? Or do you think that they, they did... reverted to type in the final? Yeah. Yeah, they did a and bit. And that's a problem. They didn't have Jude Bellingham. Or Phil yeah. Foden was injured, actually. I think people were saying, oh, it would be nice to have a... Foden, I think, was injured for the final. They didn't have some of these players that we want to come in and go, right, we're like one of the continental sides now. But they, in that tournament, they beat Germany easily. Yeah. yeah. Well, they missed chance. They you know. beat Germany easily. They were the better side, yeah. Yeah, it was well worth a 2-0 win. Yeah, my butterflies didn't think it was easy. No, but that's because of your history and how old you are and how we feel about stuff. But that, that, I mean, ultimately, they were the far better team against Germany. Fine, they, be, they beat Germany. Yeah. So, 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 so the point is, mm. ultimately, if you take the last two tournaments, mm -hmm. um, they a, a big moment it hinges on against France in the World Cup is the missed penalty from Harry Kane. Yeah, right. That's a big moment. That's Southgate's but it, fault. But it's just a moment. Mm. It's just a moment. I mean, yeah. Who knows what would have happened elsewhere? Right. I mean, it, it, that would have been different. And, and Harry Kane isn't someone who. Um, has a big fucking terrible record at penalties. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a pretty solid penalty taker for England. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's a moment. And moments happen to, by the way, you know, spoiler alert to everyone listening to this who supports England. These moments happen to all these teams. Yeah. All these teams have fucking disappointments. Well, how long has it been since Brazil got to a World Cup semi final? How bad have Germany been, you know, in yeah. recent years? You know, so, so there's all that stuff that comes into it. I look at an England team as objectively as I can. Obviously, it's not as easy as that because I am an England fan. And I say, well, really, a big percentage of the teams we've been put up against in knockout games under Southgate, we've kind of won them. Whether it be Denmark, whether it be Ukraine, whether it be Germany, whether it be whoever, mm -hmm. they got knocked out by Croatia in 2018 when they're at the very start of their cycle and yeah. no one thought they could do a fucking thing. And no, that Croatia side was a good Croatia They were good side. and England were tired. And, yeah. and, and that, that happens. It was a young mm. team and all the rest of it. They were a penalty shooter away from winning against Italy and winning the Euros. Mm. And they got knocked out by a France team who is the best team around. By yeah, uh, has been for the last few years. But an astonishing amount of talent. Well, and I, England went toe to toe with them. By the well, way, well they did. And I think, uh, and this so is I don't a, think it's that bad. No, I don't think it's that bad at all. I, I think this is the thing that England fans just, and I understand why because it's history. It's 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 the yearning mm. to win. It's the yearning to kind of go. Do you know what we played them and we bloody beat them and we beat them. But the thing is against that against France is. We can talk about... So what will happen is, if you're in a pub talking about this, you'd say, yeah, but they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Yeah, but it was, um, you know, Harry Kane penalty was... With, and there was a moment where France wobbled and even a couple of Southgate haters that I play football with were like, in that 10 or 5-minute period when France wobbled, they were like, oh my goodness, I think we might win the World Cup. Right, when all said and done, England lose the game. Yeah. And I think that that's it. People just can't get past that. But I think... The, I, I agree with you. I think it's... It, it, it's a bit harsh. But the thing is, England have a chance this summer to do this now. But they've got to go and do it. And that, and that is, people are just not, I think they've been jaded so much in the past that when it comes to the crunch, i.e. going all the way and getting the hand on the trophy, they, 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 they haven't done it. So how can they beat the better teams? I think um, with composure, not panicking. They showed a bit of that against France, but they've got to take the moments. I know believe, that sounds basic. They've got to believe as well. They've got to believe as yeah, well. Ex ex but, exactly, but yeah, exactly. But you have to look at that. You know, I don't that. think it's a tactical. I don't think it's, all right, they need to push that man up there. and then and there's no. a, uh, Maybe the subs, you know, if you look at the Euros final, you think the game's getting away from us here. Right, let's make a sub and try and be positive or, or try and do something. That's where I agree with Southgate coming up short. Um, but they, but they, they had a game off against the United States in the group. Mm. They won the other two games. They Blue Senegal to bits. And they were the African champion and Senegal. And, and no and mugs. People yeah. think, oh, it's an easy one. And, and, and that's the thing in this England thing. Oh, well, of course we beat Senegal 3-0. What do you mean, of course you beat Senegal 3-0? Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's where we are. Yeah. That's what Southgate's done with the side. And, and, the and, and they're on the end of a di two difficult ones against France and Italy. Yeah. So um, next question um, from the Crooked Tapper Comb. My goodness. Good name. Um, if Harry Kane isn't fit come the Euros, what do you think of playing a false nine? As Vish said the other day, I think we just go home. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean Bellingham's your man if you're talking about that. But they're not going to do that. No, they're going to play Tony. So it's a me. completely academic. They'll do play Tony. Do yeah. you think Tony's the man then after what we saw well, from just, Watkins? Watkins, I'll stand by what I said. Watkins had a much better season. Watkins deserves a lot more than he's getting. He's just coming up alongside a, you know, a generationally brilliant forward in Harry Kane who always seems to be available. But Tony's better suited to, to Kane's role than Watkins mm -hmm. is. Tony is more that type of player. And we yeah. said it on the show yesterday, you know, against Belgium, he, he does a kind of quite quite a Kane thing, really. It's almost like a Kane tribute where 
he, he targets a, a kind of slow defender, gets off the back of him, wins mm. a penalty, takes a penalty himself, and it's like, mm-hmm. what are you worried about? Yeah. That's what Kane kind of does. It was brilliant. Yeah, so, so I, I wouldn't be... I, I think a lot of people kind of misunderstood what I was saying when I talked about Watkins and, 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 and Tony a month or so ago. What I was actually saying was, if you're going to set your stall out and, 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 and talk about players performing, Watkins is, you know, outside of... Watkins is probably the best English centre forward in the Premier League. Like his numbers would suggest yeah. that. And he's, and he's done everything he can. So for people to say, oh yeah, but Tony this and Tony that. Tony's not been in the conversation for a, a year. Mm. So we have to at least make that point. But Tony's come in. He's taken advantage of what you, you have to do. What, he's done what you have to do in football at the top level. Mm-hmm. He's taken advantage of a player not being available. And he's, and he's taken his chance. So I imagine they'll just play Tony and that'll be that. Yeah. Um, so that answered that question. That does it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one from Robbie. Which players do you think could be doing their swan song for England this summer? So uh, we're basically thinking... They would play or be in the squad this Euros, but then the World Cup in 2026, they're, they're not going to be in that, and that will be this will be the last tournament. Basically. Henderson is probably an obvious one. Yeah, Carl uh, Walker's 33. Walker probably, but he's, he defies belief. He does. Trippy is 33. I think Trippy could be um, could be one who might fall into yeah, that. Yeah, those those are the three standout ones. I would say. Yeah, possibly Rico Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, what about this from Calad? You've got five players to take penalties. Oh, blimey. Who are you picking? Tony. Kane. Oh, you've got to think of those who will be on the pitch. Yeah, I've got I've got um, seven for that reason. Yeah. And th- I mean, those who could be subs as well and come yeah, on. Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'd have Tony Kane. Rashford, I think is, um, is fair to say he, mm-hmm. he would be in there. Saka does take penalties. Yeah. So I probably have Saka in there, although just again, I mean, I know Rashford missed in the same shootout, but I would be, oh, blimey. It makes yeah. me feel ill almost thinking about all that. Um, and who would be my fifth? Um, I don't think Foden takes many penalties. Uh, Bellingham, I think, because he would step up. I think he's that type. I've got, I had Kane, Bellingham, Saka, Rice, Foden, Watkins, and Tony. Rice was another one, actually. Yeah. yeah. I thought he's, again, that type of player. Well, Rice strikes the ball so well. Yeah. Yeah. And I, he's the kind of guy who rises to that type of moment. Isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So my question to you, um, if I can, uh, if we can finish uh, the show with one of mine, if that's okay. Of course, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is um, if both are on the pitch, which would seem very unlikely, but both are on the pitch, Tony and Kane, and England get a very crucial penalty. Who well, would Kane you, will take it. But who would you rather? The reason why I'm going to say Tony is because in the big moments, Kane has actually missed two penalties for England. He missed against Denmark in the yeah. semi final. Got, got the rebound, rebound, yeah. But he did miss. Yeah, he missed against France. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean um, it's a really good question. It's, it's also very unlikely to happen. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't see if, if, if England are trying to do something and Southgate's trying to roll the dice, <laughs> he's not going to bring on Tony when mm. Kane's on there. He's mm. going to bring on Watkins. Yeah. And so, and Watkins, by the way, is a good penalty taker. Yeah. So I, I, I don't mind Tony taking Tony, Tony's a brilliant penalty taker, so I'll be fine with that. And, and but the thing is, realistically, it's quite hard to get yourself in that mindset because really, I mean, realistically, he's not going to out trump Kane mm. on the pitch. Kane is going to be the penalty taker, yeah. and he might miss again. And then we'll go, then we'll maybe start to ask questions. <laughs> we know some of the great players, like Lionel Messi's not a brilliant penalty taker for some reason. Well, he weird. was in the World Cup though for Argentina. Yeah, but it's weird. overall it's weird how his record it is, isn't yeah. as good as you think it would be. So it's it's kind of feels like a completely different game within a game, but. Yeah. Um, if we're in a situation where England are getting a penalty in a crucial game, I'm very happy anyway. I'd take that all day long. Yeah, you would. You would. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble, part of the ACAST Creator Network. We're back tomorrow with the preview show. Uh, do follow us on X, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at Football Ramble. And don't forget to subscribe on your podcast apps. Yeah, so it's been a pleasure talking to you uh, with, with regards to England and the state of play and so on. But do remember um, that Lions Watch will be making its big return on uh, the 2nd of May as we uh, count the weeks into the Euros, of course. Yeah, get your questions in. We've had loads already. We've got a big spreadsheet full of them now, so we'll get through as many as we can, but we'll do the most relevant ones. So do send your, your questions in ahead of the 2nd of May and we'll start to, to get you involved in the show as well. Love it. Not far off, everybody. Oh, I, f- I feel it in my, my bones. Come on. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.